Hello and welcome to my VV Gamma graphics tutorial. So into this tutorial, I'd like to share how to create some sort of like a particle effect out of a dense 3D model. I'm basically going to be using a GPU instancing and yeah, it's not an actual particle effect. Yeah, we're also be using stride for this. So yeah, let's get started. So we'll start up from scratch uh, as always. And today we're, we're going to be using stride. So let's open up Stride, VL Stride from the pack. Okay, let me wear the mask. And then we'll get a scene window uh, to make sure that we can preview what kind of result we're getting. Oh yeah, and by the way, before doing this, let us let me create some sort of like a dense uh, 3D model in, in Blender. It's not a Blender tutorial, so I'm not going to explain this in detail, but I'll just uh, play around with it. Uh, Okay, so the shape is not any important. It's so uh, this is what I'm going to be using. I think it has enough uh, vertices on its surface. So I'll export this as uh, an OBJ because we're not using any material for today. Uh, let me move this out. I just put it somewhere. Okay, so I got it exported. So I'm going to be importing. I'm going to import that into VVVV. Okay, so this is my render, so I'll need a root scene. Yeah, finally we're back to VVV. Okay, so we need a root scene and then I'll need a, a skybox light just for now. And then I'll be using a node called file model, file model. So this is a node that allows me to import uh, 3D models into VVV. So here I'll just choose the 3d model that i just exported from blender side project okay and then i'll connect this guy yeah maybe it was it was a bit too heavy but anyway so i've got this guy and then i'll need a model entity just to make sure that i can preview this guy and then i'll connect the model into maybe okay so now we've got uh the 3d model imported into uh VVV and next up what I'm going to be doing is I want to get the vertices out of this 3D model and to do so there is a node called mesh split I uh, know mesh split yeah and there's four different types of mesh split split and the first one only has a position and indices and uh, indices out but the second one has a uh, normal outs and if you have a new V, so there's a new V out, and this one has a tangent out as well. So if you're, depending on what you want to have for today, I just need a position three, cause cause I'm only get I only want the vertex position out of it. So I'll be clicking this one, and then as you can see, the input for mesh split is a mesh, and this guy is outputting a model. So what I need to do is I need to convert this guy to a mesh. And model is basically a group of meshes. So what I can do is, uh, what was it? Mesh, and there should be a node that could provide me. Oh yeah, get meshes, get mesh. Yeah, so there is a node called get mesh. From this, you can get the first uh, or the meshes out as a spread. For today, I only have one, mesh so I'll be using this one and connect this guy to mesh split and as you can see now we've got the entire vertices out of the 3d model and it's quite a lot actually I think you should make it a little bit lower because this is gonna damage <laughs> uh, your uh, CPU or GPU whatever uh, right now there's too many but anyway I'll just keep go going uh, this way and what I want to do next is I want to preview these vertices as a box, let's say. So I'll create a node called box and then I'll connect this guy to the root scene. So control plus and then add another root scene input and then I'll connect this guy here. And then uh, basically you can change transform of the box right here. But if I want to create 
73,000 bucks. I would definitely not do it directly. I would not connect this to the transform. Instead of that, there is a way that you can uh, convert all these values as a, a GPU buffer and indices and feed that into a box so that it doesn't use CPU to uh, replicate this amount of boxes. But instead of that, it will use GPU for that. Um, and to do so, what I'll need to do is uh, there is a node called from value and spread. I first of all connect this guy. And the reason why I need this is because I need to connect uh, instancing spread component. And this guy is the guy who's helping me converting a spread of matrix to an instancing component. And to connect this to your box, and by the way, it's connected to components. And to connect this to the box, you will need a from value node in between. Just remember this. Uh, yeah, so now the last thing I have to do is I would have to connect a spread of matrix into this guy. And to do so, what I'll do is I'll add a node called transform, or I'll only need to translate, so translate. 3D, and then I'll right click, surround, and for each this guy, and then I'll connect the entire position into translate, and then I'll put that as a spread of matrix, and then connect this guy to the box. So now, as you can see, the result has changed, but I'm not seeing anything, and I guess this is because the box is just too big, so I'll small this. I'll make the size smaller, and then I'll also disable the uh, model entity so that I can see only the boxes. So as you can see now, we've got a result with a very dense particles, and they are all boxes. Um, yeah, I'll change the background because this is not really uh, visible. So I'll use a node called background and add some gradient. Uh, gradient for the background. I'll make the background a little bit gradient. Okay, so now I'm seeing a black box. I also want to change these particles to a white uh, color material. So I'll add a node called color material and then put that into the box. And then, yeah, now, and then I'll change the gradient color to from to a very bit darker one with a bit of color. Yep, this looks good. I'm gonna add some color here as well. Okay, so now as you can see, all these boxes are white, fully white, and they are uh, particles. Looks pretty good. Um. Yeah, so the basic setup is quite simple. So thanks to Yorig for creating this get meshes a node. And I think many other guys helped it implementing into VVV. But it's very handy. So if you want to get, if you have a vertex color in your model, then you can use the node called mesh split, uh, I think, text two. I thought there was a one with the color. Yeah, but there should be a way you can get the color out of 3D models as well. Oh no, text is text coordinate. I'm not sure. Well, forget about it. Um, yeah, this is pretty much it. It's quite simple. Uh, oh, one thing I wanted to share. Yeah, this is right. So right now, I'm using uh, get meshes and I'm getting all this uh, 73,000 uh, vertices into 4H and I'm feeding that into instance spread component. And because this guy is converting to GPU. My machine is not having a big problem. However, uh, this is not a smart. This is not the smartest way to do this. And the reason is because uh, this for each. So this guy who's converting CPU into GPU, they are uh, updating every single frame. And because I'm not gonna be animating. Well, I can animate if I want. For example, if I add a multiply here and make sure you don't do this with a dense uh, point cloud data because it might crash. 
But for example, right now I have uh, 73,000. So I'll do this count node and connect this guy here and then create the same amount of random spread and then I'll multiply that. So what I can do here is uh, center has to be one yeah so what I can do here is I can change the position of uh, these particles so I'm multiplying random spreads into every single position to make oh and as you can see each vertices seems to have three different points and that's the reason why it's there's more than I thought but anyway so I, I'm adding random spread into any vertex, vertices so that it makes it look a little bit more randomized. And I can also animate this. However, if you animate this, it's going to be heavy because it has to process th this amount of vertices every time. And if, you, if you're not into animating this and this is the final result that you want, what you can do is you can... Uh, Regionize this 4H by right-clicking surround and using a region called cache. And what this guy does is every so if you don't if you force it, then so right now there's no output and cache region has an input called force. If I bang this guy, as you can see, now I've got a 73,000 output out of the cache. And I'm going to be connecting this guy to here. However, because I don't, I'm not pressing force, if I change the random spread input, it's not changing anything. And this is because if uh, the force is not triggered. If I trigger this guy, then it caches the entire input and outputs that. So it, this means it's not updating every frame, but it's instead of that, it's only updating uh, when you force, uh, you, when you click force. And what's cool about this is, it, so it doesn't, how do you say, it's not calculating the position every frame. Instead of that, it's only calculating whenever you trigger it. So your once all the cache is done. The machine will be working very smooth. And this is very handy uh, if you're doing some particle effect that you don't really need to it to be animated. Okay, so this was it. Quite simple. So for the rest of the time, I'll be playing around with this, adding some colors. Uh, by the way, you can spread the color material as well. Oh, I'll do that for the last thing. So I'll delete this guy. I'll delete this guy. And I'll add a node called the, the color materials. Okay, uh, or not okay. I'm gonna be using a PBR material with metallic, and then here I'll be adding a called node emissive, and this emissive has an emissive map and intensity. Intensity could be key. Uh, set as one so I want to add a random value into this emissive map which as you can see the first value is red the second value is I guess green here yeah. and the third one is blue and then the final one is alpha so what I'll be doing is I'll just add a RGB join here and connect this guy to here by using color per instance so this guy gives the color per instance. And then what I'll need to do is I'll need to create a RGB spread with the same amount of this guy. So what I'll do here, this guy is a vector three and the position is not that bad. So I'll be using a vector split node and then I'll connect this guy here and then I'll just add these to the RGB and I'll keep alpha as one. And then I'll connect this guy to the color per instance. So by doing this force, I should get a colorful. Yeah, pretty colorful, colorful boxes. And you 
course I can make this one bigger or smaller. This looks better actually. Yeah, this is pretty much it. And w since this is very visible, the values are very visible. For example, if you want to make some sort of like a scanning effect that keeps showing um, particles from the bottom to top, then one thing I know you can do is you can uh, do use this guy, for example, and say if the Y value is higher than this, then show the particle size as one. Instead of that, uh, show it as zero, then you can do some sort of like scanning effects of what's well but it's gonna damage it's quite heavy because it means you're gonna be updating this value uh, position every single frame with the calculation so it's not really machine uh, friendly but if you're interested in creating that um, I mean try it I've done once but no, I'm not gonna be doing this uh, for, for this model okay anyway uh, this was it for today for the rest of the time I'll keep playing around with this guy and trying to make out some sort of like an interesting effect. Okay, so this is pretty much it for today. Uh, what I did is basically I just scaled up a little bit with the box. And I also added some control to the light, uh, to the coloring. So this is the color instance material. And I, I instead of using RGBA, I'm using from HSL so that I can use control the hue rather than the entire RGB value. And then here, uh, I'm using distance node uh, to compare between this and the uh, vertex position so what I can do is if I scale it up or down then as you can see the scale changes based on this position so I'm moving Y axis if I change for example Z axis it goes up or down it gets bigger or smaller so it looks pretty cool um, and so I'm applying this uh, distant thing to the color and to the scaling of the boxes as well um, so that I can control a lot of values at the same time. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is it. Well, I can keep playing around all the th on as much as I want, but I just finish it here. And if you're interested in playing around with patch, uh, I'll put the link below so that you can download and try it by your side on your side as well. Uh, please uh, feel free to sub subscribe to my channel. It will be very helpful. Okay. Uh, that was it for today. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.